Hey everyone, welcome back. This is probably the final upload before, or the first upload I have since Duviri. Welcome to an updated Protea build. This is probably one of my favorite Protea builds so far. Newfound utility, satisfying sound effects, and it turns many, many heads on what's going on. Fast-paced gameplay with explosive power, literally, and an invested build. These are the kind of setups that make Warframe feel alive to me. Take control of Protea as she unravels the fate of her enemies through time. Let's take a journey together to uncover this build's secrets. Temporal Anchor. The often overlooked ability of Protea is the highlight of today. Most often subsumed over in favor of her fast scaling turrets, we look at a comfortable and easy base steel path setup that effectively nukes any enemy. Now, it can scale but requires a little bit of extra work. Temporal Anchor is similar to Equinox's main. It stores damage during combat and explodes it during uncast or when time runs out. There are some key differences though. Unlike Mame, Anchor stores absolute damage you deal even if it exceeds enemy max HP rather than a fraction of enemy HP. Assuming you're able to kill initial enemies, this makes Anchor have far higher damage potential than Mame to the point it can even surpass armor scaling and not need strip at all. While the video I'm showcasing today uses high strength and pillage to shred all armor off, it has come to my attention that Nash Prime also uploaded a Temporal Anchor Potea DPS build, albeit with different strats. It also works really well, storing hundreds of millions of damage to get past lacking armor strip, so I definitely advise you to check it out. I've linked it down in the description and pinned comment. The other difference about Temporal Anchor is that it requires line of sight to apply damage. This is unfortunate because Mame goes through walls and hits everything within the spherical hitbox. This alone is enough reason why most people have abandoned Temporal Anchor, much less its blast typing also being problematic and resisted by armor. But if you want to make the clock tick, then maybe today's build works for you. It's simple to use, even if complicated to mod. The gameplay loop is simple. Go to red dots on the map, cast Temporal Anchor, cast Pillage to strip them and blow them up with Serana. Drop dispensaries and turrets if you want. Go to a new place with red dots, deactivate Temporal Anchor and blow them all up. Rinse and repeat. This Protea works the best being in the thick of battle and set of edges because Temporal Anchor lets you head out to a connector and blow things up, then reset to the battlefield core and turn around and nuke things in the opposite direction. You want to build roughly 3 to 4 million damage stored into Temporal Anchor if you want to nuke on base steel path through armor. If you cast Pillage right before it detonates, then even 100k is enough. Let's look at that Protea build. We're running Corrosive Projection for Pillage since it cuts the strength requirement down to 328 to full strip in a single cast. This is important to keep up with their fast paced blitzing playstyle. In fact, we actually need strength charts to make this possible. I have 3 strength archon charts for plus 35%. This pushes us to 289, and Matarai gives plus 40% on Sling Strength to hit 329. Alternatively, if you have 0 Strength Shard Spare, you can run Normal Intensify instead of Transient Fortitude, which lets you drop Molt Efficiency for Molt Augmented. Combining this with Matarai will also let you hit 329 Strength, but requires all 250 stacks of Molt Augmented to do so. This should only take a maximum of 3 minutes to reach so that your Pillage strips in one cast. Adaptation is on the build for comfort today since we get massive overshields from pillage spam. It gives us more breathing room since we aren't health tanking. But if you want to be more daring, I would advise dropping Adaptation for Augur Reach. This boosts Temporal Anchor from 2175 to 26.25 meters radius, a juicy DPS clearing bump. Arachne and Vigorous Swap are universal base damage buffs. On Glaive's Exodia Contagion and a few other weapons, these work like external final multipliers, and instead increases Serata's final damage by plus 150%, or 2.5 times damage scaling. It is very easy to activate, just quickly tap a wall latch and you're good to go for 30 seconds. Since energized procs during Temporal Anchor are wasted, we also bring Equilibrium. This ensures the orb drops from the nuke can be picked up for maximum energy economy. Yes, all ammo, energy, shields, and health are reset when Temporal Anchor ends. All ammo, energy, and health pickups are thus wasted. If you're more experienced, you can skip Energize and use another arcane of your choice, such as Arachne. This is also why you want to cast Temporal Anchor first before spamming all your other abilities. Since abilities themselves are not reset, hopefully the orb drops from Dispensary are still there for you, assuming you didn't pick them up mid-anchor by accident. We want to be roughly 100 duration, since 8 seconds on Temporal Anchor gives us enough damage to build DPS while traveling to a new area to drop the nuke. 
This means we don't need to build high duration, but we also can't dump it. Molt efficiency is our answer on today's base build, whereas the Molt Augmented alternative I mentioned earlier lets you get 100 duration natively, but requires enough kill stacks to reach a 328 breakpoint for single cast pillage strip. We also bring an epitaph around today to spread radiation proc so enemies shoot our shields less. It also spreads viral, so our Serata does more damage as well as our anchor nuke. The auger mods don't really matter here since we have pillage spam to regen shields and strip. Serata was chosen because it has an 8 toxin damage. I can make viral damage with just a single cold mod, saving slots on the build. There are options though. Prime Smite increases the build by 1.55 times damage, and the Force Toxin procs double dip from Serata by 2.55 times. If I use Prime Fever Strike instead of the Smite, my raw viral damage is 1.87 times stronger. But my dots also only have 1.87 times scaling. It is up to you if you want more raw damage or stronger dots. Alternatively, if you don't like the chain throw mechanic of power throw, you can drop that to run both Prime Smite and Prime Fever Strike. Killing Blow and Amalgam Organ Shatter are both really important to cut down the heavy wind-up time to 0.5 seconds. Volatile Quick Return boosts the AoE by 3 meters to 7.8, which is huge, because Glaive's AoEs have 0 falloff. Corrupt Charge to boost us to 2x combo for double damage. You just hold to throw and spam heavy throw detonations when you strip enemies with pillage for giga damage. That's it. And yes, because a pillage also hits Acolytes, you can strip their armor off once their shields are gone, and Serata can rip them apart. Focus schools, as mentioned, is Matarai. This is important because Link Strength's plus 40% buff is required to consistently hit the 328 mark for pillage to single cast strip, unless you want to load her up with a ton of strength shards. Power Transfer is also handy for plus 50% casting speed, making Temporal Anchor a lot comfier to cast. It has a mostly negligible effect on pillage and a slightly noticeable on your occasional dispensary cast. Your turrets exist. You don't have that high duration, so at best they are ignite proc sources to lightly crowd control enemies. Panzer is the same build as always. Viral quills to spread spores to stack synth set procs for health orbs everywhere. Since Forterra runs around to nuke in different places constantly, Panzer is still able to spread spores during your run and gun before your nukes go off. Serata itself does not have enough AoE to prevent Panzer from spreading quills. This easily sources the energy you need to funnel back into temporal anchor casts. Martyr to keep you alive, Devolution to give it infinite lives, Radar, and Vacuum. As I said before, the rotation is super simple. You find red dots on your map, cast Temporal Anchor and Pillage. Blow up some enemies with Serata. You can cast Dispenser if you feel like it, go to new red dots, uncast Anchor, or wait for it to expire. Rotation done and now you reset. You can precast Pillage on them if you want as well for free shields and easier killing, as well as strip before the new kits. As long as your rewind ends before pillage returns, you can actually gain shields back from the pre-anchor reset pillage. Consider this a bonus, rather than something you can actually play around. The more you move during anchor, the longer the rewind animation. And if pillage returns mid-rewind, the shield gains are nullified. Here's to my updated temporal anchor Protea. Make sure to check out Nash's build too, I linked in the description and a pinned comment. Cheers! If this is your first time watching, feel free to leave like or better yet subscribe. Let me know your thoughts down in the comments. 79.5% of you are not subscribed. I'm trying my best to get you new information out always as soon as possible, like I'm doing with the Duveri update. Stick around if you want to see interesting memes and builds on a nearly daily basis. You don't want to miss out on any of that, do you? That'll be it for this video. Thank you all for watching and see you all next time.